Lift those hands to heaven, magnify the King of Kings. Celebrate him for the testimonies, for his wonderful works in our midst. Lord, we bless your holy name. There's none like you. We give you all the praise and glory. Be exalted in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we've come before you. We appreciate you. We acknowledge your good hand upon this great commission, your servant, David Biumi, and upon our lives. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We ask that you speak to us in this service, the word that will bless us and transform us. Let that word come strong from heaven. Let the grace that back this great commission and your servant, David Biumi, answer to me now. Let it answer to every one of us in the name of Jesus, both live and online. And we vow to give you all the glory and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Jam those hands together for Jesus. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We all know the theme of this month is Holy Spirit, my helper. A songwriter said, there is something that makes me come into your presence. My helper. Praise the Lord. So because you came today, you enjoy his help. In the name of Jesus. Wherever you would have been frustrated or stagnated. Wherever you would have seen shame. Because you came today into his presence. The help of the Holy Spirit will answer to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate God for this privilege. I want to appreciate my father. Papa, thank you. I want to appreciate mama. Mama, thank you. And every one of you that is part of this service, God will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. As you can see, uh, Papa is not around, but he'll be back by Sunday. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ, a little while you see me not, a little while you see me again. Even machine, when machine works to a point, you have to service the machine. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, so just take it that Papa went for servicing. He's coming back uh, to <laughs> function better in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So get set for Sunday. Praise the Lord. But today we'll be looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Like we all know, the Holy Spirit is not a feeling for the purpose of uh, those joining us for the first time. And hearing and hearing gives faith and understanding. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling. He's not a falling down. He's not a dove. He is a person. Just like you are a person, the person by your side is also a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Praise the Lord. If you look through, you go through the scriptures from um, Old Testament to the New Testament, you discover that the Godhead each of them dominated at a particular time. In the Old Testament, you hear more about God the Father, God the Father, God the Father, God the Father. The New Testament, the, the introduction to the New Testament was Jesus, the Son. But he could not function until the Holy Ghost came upon him. The Holy Ghost was walking with him silently. All the miracles he did was because the Holy Ghost was upon him. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So all the miracles he did was through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Because in Philippians chapter 2, Jesus Christ said he had to deny his heavenly state and took the form of a man when he came down on earth. He took the form of a servant, the seed of Abraham, humbled himself and came as a man. So he did not come in his heavenly state and glory. He denied everything. That's why it was possible for him to die as a child. The God had to tell Joseph, please run with this boy. Take him to Egypt. If not, Pharaoh. Pharaoh does not have joy. He wants to kill him. Take him. And they had to run with Jesus. If not, if he had all the powers, just like God, there will, there will be no need for the parents to run with him. Would there be any need for that? But at that time, he relinquished all his powers and came just like a little child. If Pharaoh had caught him that time, Pharaoh would have killed him and he would have died. Because he was just a man. A little boy. And so, he had to run with Jesus. And when he came back, before he entered ministry, the Holy Ghost led him again into the wilderness to prepare himself for ministry. 
after John the Baptist baptized him, the Bible says the Holy Ghost descended upon him like a dove and he was empowered. That was when miracles started. After Jesus Christ died and ascended, there was no miracle until the Holy Ghost came back again in Acts chapter 2. And that was when the Holy Spirit took upon his own dispensation. The Father showed up first. Jesus came on the scene. And now we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. I hope it's simple enough. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Ghost is a person. He's what? A person. So if you want to excel as a child of God, you must know how to relate with him. Let's look at John chapter 16 verse 7. John 16 verse 7. I'll read from the Amplified. However, I am telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, counselor, helper, advocate, intercessor, strengthener, standby, will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. So, there are two things we can deduce from this scripture. A, the exit of Jesus is for our own profit. Jesus said, it is expedient that I go. It is to your own advantage. It is profitable to you that I leave the scene now for another to come. Secondly, B, the exit of Jesus opened the door for close fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You say, I'll send you another comforter. In John chapter 16, John chapter 14, verse 16, 17, and 18, he said, I'll pray the Father, King James, and I'll pray the Father, and he'll give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but did know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Verse 18. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. That is, I will not leave you as orphans. He said, I will come to you. That is in the person of the Holy Spirit. The third thing you need to know about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is also a comforter just as Jesus was. The difference between Jesus, his dispensation, and that of the Holy Spirit is that in the time of Jesus, he was limited by time and space. He could not be in several places at the same time. When he was in Jerusalem, he was in Jerusalem. When he was in Judea, he was in Judea. When he was in Samaria, he was in Samaria. He can't be in more than one place at a time. That's why he said, pray. The harvest is ripe for the laborers are few. He could be in, a place, in one place at a time. That's why Papa said the Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. The dispensation of the Holy Spirit is that he is everywhere at the same time. He is not bound by time and space. He is everywhere at the same time. He is God with us. He is God in us. And he is God for us. He is in me. He is in you if you are born again. And he is in our midst. He said where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. He is in every, for instance, other places in the world where they are gathered like this, where believers are gathered, wherever two or three persons gather in his name for worship, he is there. And he is inside each and every one of us as individuals. He is unlimited. That's why Jesus Christ said it is profitable. It is to your advantage that I go. Because if I don't go, you'll be limited in life. Because whenever they are in need, they run to Jesus. They were always going to him. He said, no, you need something. Something, something will come that is better than what you have now. I am just with you. But someone like me will come that will be in you, with you, and for you. Every one of you will carry the same presence. You will carry that same person. He will live and dwell inside of you. Jesus was only with them. So he said, it is to your advantage that I live. If I don't live, you can't enter into that realm. You can't enter into that dispensation where you, you operate exactly just like me. What made the ministry of Jesus Christ different from every other person? He came like 
an ordinary man. But what made his own ministry different was because of the person of the Holy Spirit that was operating through him. And now the Bible says we are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. That God will dwell in us and he will walk through us. That's the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I hope I'm not too fast. So quickly, we'll look at the purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What is the purpose of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Because the focus today is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why should we possess the gifts? Because if the purpose of the thing is not known, abuse is what? Praise the Lord. Number one, to manifest the body of Christ here on earth. To manifest the body of Christ here on earth. To manifest the body of Christ. He said, I will send you another comforter. So, in reality, Jesus never left. The person of Jesus left, but another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, came and he's still with us. And so, it is now Jesus multiplied. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, so he's in you, he's in me, he's in every child of God. So, we are supposed to be um, performing like Jesus everywhere we are found. You don't have to be a pastor to operate in the miraculous. When Saul started persecuting the church in Acts chapter 8, Philip, a brother in church, went to Samaria. And when he got there, there was no church, no revival. One man did crusade. And the Bible said he took the city of Samaria. Joy filled the city. Miracles and signs and wonders happened. You don't have to be a pastor to operate in the supernatural. The Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. Once you are a child of God, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants to operate through you. He wants to walk through you. Praise the Lord. Are we talking? Hmm? In Acts chapter 2, 120 persons received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but only the apostles stood out because of their mindset. Most times you see Papa will preach in church and he will do touch. But most of you, after you fall down and you, and you receive the impartation, you don't do anything with it because you don't know the purpose of the impartation. And so, you don't, so at times you, you, see, you see the gift manifest in your life, but because you don't know how, what to do with it, you stop seeing the manifestation. True or false? Yes. So what is the purpose of the gifts? Number one is to manifest the body of Christ here on earth. To continue the works of Jesus. Number two, for world evangelism. For world evangelism. World evangelism. Acts 1, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you shall become witnesses of me. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. For world evangelism. Number three. To edify the church. To edify the church for comfort. For the building of the church. When we talk about the church, we're talking about believers. To minister to one another for edification. Praise the Lord. Roman figure 4. For the deliverance and protection of the church. That's the believer. For the deliverance and protection of the church. You shouldn't be afraid that you are living in a compound and your landlord happens to be an occult man. He should be the one packing out, not you. Because I, 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 I paid, I bought a bad land. The land is owned by an occult man. No, that is nonsense. I hear me. Light and darkness has no business. There's nowhere darkness will overshadow light. It is light that will overshadow darkness. When you are operating with the gifts of the Holy Ghost, evil men will see you and they will tear race. Do you get what I'm saying? They are tear for 40. They will be afraid of you. When they see you, they will, they will discharge. Once you enter that environment, the environment will turn. That will be your testimony from today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And number, four, number five, for perfecting the church. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll read verse 7, 8, 9, 10, verse 11, and verse 31. I'll read verse 7, you read verse 8, and we'll be reading like that, then 31 we'll read together. Studio, are you set? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Take notes. If it's your Bible, you have a Bible. If it's your Bible, underline every man. That includes you. The, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to what? Every man to profit with thou. Verse 8.
To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Verse 10. Verse 11. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit. That the Holy Spirit is one that gives to everyone. Dividing to every man severally as he will. So, he gives to every man. So, every man can receive. Are you getting it? He gives to every man. The Bible didn't say he gives to only pastors. He gives to every man. Every man. Verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet, show I unto you a more excellent way. So, it says if you have one. And there are other gifts you desire that you are not manifesting. The Bible says you can still receive them. You can convert it. You can convert. We all heard Papa here. He said he didn't like the way um, uh, miracles was happening. He has to struggle and shout and shout and shout for miracles to happen in church. And he saw the way miracles was happening seamlessly when ben- he ministers. So he traveled and went for a program where he was. And that was where he got the impartation. And since then, when he came, you just sing and just see things happening with ease. With what? With ease. Covet. So the gifts of the Holy Ghost, they are available and they are, permit me, they are covetable. You can covet. You can what? You can covet. Now, if you look at uh, where we just read, the Bible mentioned nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We can group them into three groups. Revelation gifts. That is the gifts that reveal something. Revelation gifts. They reveal something. The second category are the power gifts. These are gifts that do something. And the third, the third category are the vocal gifts. These gifts, they say something. So let's look at the revelation gifts. The first one is the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom under revelation gifts. The word of wisdom. This is the supernatural ability to see into the plan of God. The word of wisdom is the supernatural ability to see into the plan of God. And it talks about the future. It is the supernatural ability to see into the plan of God. The supernatural ability to see into the plan of God. We've heard Papa Severly on this altar. He would would say some things. He would tell us and we were now seeing them. Am I correct? He talked about the hardship that will happen before now. Isn't it? And we are seeing it. Isn't it? The world is suffering. It's not you and I in Jesus' name. Do you get and there are some things he has said that very soon you know how some things will end, uh, but God has told him not to say anything. That's word of what wisdom. It talks about the future. Praise the Lord. Example of that is in Acts chapter 27, verse 10 and 22. Acts 27, verse 10 and 22. The second one is the word of knowledge under revelation gifts. Acts 27, 10, 22. The word of knowledge. The word of knowledge. It is the supernatural ability to see into situations and circumstances in the immediate past and present. It is the supernatural ability to see into situations and circumstances in the immediate past and present. Acts 16 verse 9. You we have, we have all witnessed that where we'll be in church and Papa will say, there's somebody here. What he says to one, he says to all. There's somebody here, this is what happened. The, you are going through uh, hardship or the person has not married and it is somebody that's close to the person like a cloth that's behind it. That as he declares now, something will happen, don't cry. That's the person and, and you see the people will get married and things will happen. Word of knowledge, that's word of knowledge. And we experience it commonly in this church. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. So it is an ability to see into situation 
and circumstances in the immediate past and present. Acts 16 verse 9. The third one under Revelation gives is discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. It is the supernatural ability to see into the spirit world and distinguish what is of God from what is of the devil. The supernatural ability to discern spirits. And we all need this one. Am I talking? Yes. At times, you can have several job offers. You need to know which one to go for. There are some that look very lucrative. But at the end of the day, it may not last. Do you get what I'm saying? Three men born again. They may come to you as a lady. Asking your hand in marriage. You need to know, discern which one to marry. This one that looks so flashy. After two years, you will backslide. I hear me? You should be able to know, to discern. Who has good intention? Who is just acting up? Discernment of spirit. Acts 16, verse 16 to 18. Now, the power gives. The power gives. The first one under the power gives is the gift of faith. The gift of faith. Now, this gift is different from the ordinary faith. faith. We all know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Am I correct? Yes. Now, that, is, and that faith is in levels. Is in what? Levels and dimension based on your depth of revelation. So, we, we, we as believers, we manifest faith in different levels. But the gift of faith is different from that kind of faith. When it's in manifestation, you, 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 just, you don't see any limitation. You don't see any obstacle. Anything at that point is possible. You go beyond your natural faith. And we have seen Papa operate. What is happening at the Gruta Cathedral is not human. It is not natural faith that is working there. Am I correct? One day I and Pastor Bill were in a meeting where uh, they opened... Um, the, some of the bills for a particular um, thing they wanted to do there. When they were, the way they were calling the millions, I turned to Baza and said, excuse me. <laughs> this is why some people used to faint in court. <laughs> there was a time something came up and somebody fainted in court. I said, all this kind of money they call, this is why some people used to faint. I said, look at how they're just calling millions of dollars as if they are talking about millions of naira. Millions of dollars. Millions. And people have been in that meeting, he's doing as if he's not hearing. Because he's not looking at the physical availability of cash. He's operating with a supernatural gift. I hear me? I hear me? Yes. And we're just looking at him. Papa is not moved. You're just calling money like that as if it's not money. You were calling. I had to uh, lose my tie. And I was feeling hot inside the sea. And Papa was not moved. That's the gift of faith. Where you do incredible things. And you don't feel it. Praise the Lord. And he's here in this commission. Praise the Lord. Are we not blessed? The second one under power gives is the gift of working of miracles. The gift of working of miracles. This is a supernatural demonstration of signs and wonders. Supernatural demonstration of signs and wonders. Romans 15, 18 to 20. That is putting aside natural laws at will. Putting aside natural laws at what? Will. And we have seen incredible miracles on this mountain. Am I correct? There was a time they went to bring down our fence at the Gruta. And Papa picked the stone and said, oh, everybody that was involved in it, just as they broke down this fence, that is how they will go down. And all of them died. Working of miracles. Papa has sent several persons here. And they died. We have heard the testimony. We have witnessed it. Isn't it? Working of miracles. It goes beyond healing. Miracles. Financial breakthroughs. God has raised so many persons here. Through that ministration. The third one is the gift of healing. The gifts of healing. The gifts of healing. This is a type of multiple gifts. This is a type of multiple gifts. It is the supernatural ability to effect healing and cure. 
it is the supernatural ability to effect healing and cures. Acts chapter 14, verse 8 to 10. Supernatural ability to effect healing and cures. You see that every service, almost every service, every day happens like water here. Am I correct? Praise the Lord. The third category, which, is the, which are the vocal gifts, the first one under the third category, vocal gifts, is the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy. You know, sp- speaking or teaching the word of God under inspired utterance is also prophecy. Like what is happening now is prophecy because the word of God, the Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. So this, the word of God is a word of prophecy. But this one is talking about the gift of what? Prophecy. Now, this is the supernatural ability to bring a message from God in a known tongue. Supernatural ability to bring a message from God in a known tongue. At times, people will be teaching and he will give a word, message, like there was a time he was teaching and he said, he did altar call, some persons came out and he said, there's a cult boy in church, you are supposed to be out, come out and give your life to Christ. This is your last chance. That after now, if you don't do it, the person was going to die. And the young man refused to come out and he died. It was a story that happened in Uniport. Most of you heard the story, right? Yes. That was a message. It was a warning. And the young man declined. And what happened, happened. Praise the Lord. Then the next, which is the gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation. I'll take the two together because they go hand in hand. The gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation. Now, this gift is different from the, you receiving the Holy Ghost baptism and you speak in tongues. This one is um, a message comes from the Lord in tongues and then the interpretation comes. You speak and interpret. So, this, this gift is dependent on tongues. The other one, prophecy comes in a known tongue that we can hear and understand, but the speaking in tongues and interpretation comes in a supernatural language, divine language that needs someone that has the gift to interpret, to interpret, otherwise it does not make sense to anybody. And that's why Paul said in Acts, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, that if anybody speaks in tongues and there's no interpretation, keep quiet. That is not talking about you as an individual praying in the Holy Ghost because some people that don't understand how the gifts of the Holy Spirit operate, they said uh, we should stop, don't speak in tongues in church. No. We speak in tongues for personal edification. You pray in tongues for personal edification. That when, what Paul said there was if you are in church and you are giving um, a message in tongues, if you don't have interpretation, nobody understands what you are saying, so keep quiet. Teach and let people understand what you are saying. Praise the Lord. But hear this. It is one thing to demonstrate the power of God through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But we should note that manifesting the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not a sign of spiritual maturity. I hear me. Paul wrote First Corinthians and Second Corinthians addressing issues, character issues in the church. Because the Corinthian church, they were operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Paul said, they, they, he said, they come behind in no gift. That is, every member was just operating in the thing. They were just flowing, flowing, flowing. There was heavy revival. But they were immature. They did not grow in the spirit. They were always fighting, arguing, quarreling, backbiting, gossiping, and all of that. And Paul told them that if you have envy and you are backbiting yourself, there's contention amongst you. Are you not babes? He said, I have so many things to tell you, but because you are immature spiritually, you cannot receive them. I can't tell them to you now. Second 
In Luke chapter 10, the apostles, they came back and they were rejoicing. That from verse 17 down to 20, they were rejoicing. That when they went, demons were subject to them. They, they called the name of Jesus and miracles happened. And Jesus Christ told them, thank God for it, but glory not in that. What you should glory about and be excited about is that your name, they are written in the book of life. So in as much as we desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we should also balance it with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What reveals Christian maturity are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. That is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and verse 23. The Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. So as you desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit, also balance it with you manifesting the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That depicts Christian maturity. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ had character and operated in power. Papa is a man of integrity. He has character. He operates in power. Praise the Lord. So desire the two. Desire what? Praise the Lord. So how to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit? How to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit? We all know that Papa carries what we call conductible grace. Am I correct? He's manifesting by God's grace, special grace and privilege. He's manifesting the gifts of the Holy Ghost. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5 and 6, Saul came in the company of prophets where they were prophesying. And the Bible says because he was in that environment, the grace was conductible. And Paul, sorry, uh, Saul caught it and he prophesied along with them. Belonging to a commission like this in our time, privileged to have a great man of God like Pastor David Ibiumi, is direct access to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Am I communicating? All you need to do is to connect with your heart. Is to love him. Listen to his materials. Listen to his messages. Read his books. Ezekiel 2 2. When he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet, and I heard him that spake unto me. So by hearing him alone, the, the grace of God upon his life, the gift of the Holy Ghost, his manifesting begins to rub off on you. Am I talking? In Acts chapter 10, verse 44. The Bible says, as Peter was speaking, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, fell upon all them that heard him. Fell upon all them that heard him. So, as you hear him regularly and constantly, you will see yourself begin to manifest the gifts. Praise the Lord. Then how do we sustain the gifts? How do we sustain the gifts? How do we sustain the gifts? First Thessalonians 5.19 says, quench not the spirit. How do we sustain it? Constant evangelism. Acts 10.38 How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So the more you go out, because that's one of the purposes of the, um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when you go out, he anoints you more. The Holy Ghost anoints you more. It's like you having something, you don't use it. It will diminish. Am I correct? Yes. But as long as you keep engaging the power of God, the Holy Spirit, when you go out for evangelism, you keep seeing more of his grace. That's why one of the reasons why we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit for world evangelism, to win souls. Acts 1 verse 8. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall become witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, and unto the utmost part of the earth. Secondly, intense worship. Worship and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Acts 13 verse 2. While they worship and minister to the Lord, he said, separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas. Praise the Lord. So worship. Com learn to commune with the Holy Spirit. You heard Papa Paul said in his house, everywhere there's music. That is communion with the Holy Spirit. Worship song is always playing in his house. Communion with the Holy 
spirit. He flows. Thirdly, word and prayer. Word and prayer. He said, we'll give ourselves continuity to the mission of the word and to prayer. So, spend time with the word. Study the word of God for yourself. And in, invest time in kingdom advancement prayers. The more you do these things, you just see yourself growing in the grace and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And finally, a word of caution, refuse to talk against God's anointed. You honor him. When you talk against him, the gift will begin to diminish. That will not be a portion in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. This is the end of the reading in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Rise to your feet. The word of God says, Ask and it shall be given. You lift up your voice in one minute. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray in your understanding. You ask the Holy Ghost to come upon you afresh. Lord, I want to operate in that conductible grace that is upon our father David Ibiome, that is upon this mountain that is in this commission. Lord, I desire the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can look at your note and begin to declare them. Lift your voice and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall find. Lord, we ask that the gifts of the Holy Ghost operational in salvation ministries upon your servant David Ibiome. Begin to walk in our lives in greater dimensions. In the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. To walk in our lives. The gift of the word of wisdom. The gift of the word of knowledge. The gift of discerning of spirits. The gift of faith. The gift of walking on miracles. The gift of healing. The gift of prophecy. The gift of speaking in tongues. And interpretation of tongues. Lord, we ask for all these gifts to work in our lives like never before. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. As you step out to evangelize, they will begin to manifest. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. But you must be born again. I hear me. You must accept Jesus, the gift of Christ, first of all. Before you can accept, before he can give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. You are here, headquarters church, satellite church is on, also online, you are watching. And you know you have not accepted Christ. I want you to say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. I am born again. I am a child of God in Jesus mighty name. Please, others may be seated while those of you that give a life to Christ remain standing. The ushers will attend to you quickly. Those of you online, just go through the screen and we'll reach out to you. The information, just respond and we'll reach out to you. Praise the Lord.